everybody, this week on ANN News Kids, I'm going to be talking about the China COVID warning, the Cuba hotel blast, Ethiopia killing, and the Russia-Ukraine war. The country of the week is Gambia, and, the, and unfortunately, nobody guessed it. The extra fun segment is all about fun facts about the English language. And in the Chinese segment, we are learning how to say the personal pronouns I, you, he, she, and it. In the Prieto Cure segment, we are talking to Rob Hume, a pilot who has an amazing story and journey. I really hope you can like, subscribe, share, and comment below because that would really help us reach 1,000 subscribers. Thank you. Xi Jinping, China's president, has issued a strong warning to the people who are against his zero-COVID policy in China. It's the first time that he has publicly remarked China's battle against COVID-19. Last week we talked about the rare protests in China because of the frequent harsh lockdowns. People in China, and especially in Shanghai, are protesting and have been doing so for five weeks on social media talking about the low food shortages. People are also banging pots and pans on their windows and shouting and others are clashing with and chasing police officers and health workers in the streets. The president said that they won the battle against COVID in Wuhan and now they're doing the same for Shanghai. Thank you. More than 22 people have died in Saratoga Hotel, Old Havana, one of Cuba's best five-star hotels. There was a gas tanker parked right outside the hotel and ignited and caught on fire, causing this huge blast. 70 more people have been hospitalized and people are being searched for under the debris. This hotel is a really historic one and it was about to have its grand reopening post-pandemic in just four days. It is now closed for refurbishment. The president of Cuba confirmed that it was not a bomb or an attack and it was just an accident. The remains of hundreds of people in Ethiopia's Tigray region are being destroyed to delete the evidence of the mass killing. People have been seen digging mass graves, burning bodies and transporting the remains out of the region. The killing is ethnically motivated and there have been waves of ethnic cleansing against the Tigrayans for a long time in Ethiopia. The fight between the rest of Ethiopia and the TPLF, Tigray People's Liberation Front, has been going on since November 20. There is going to be a possible UN investigation team to investigate the mass killing that killed hundreds of people in Ethiopia. The Russia-Ukraine war is still active. Ukraine said that the only way for there to be a peace deal between the two countries is if Russia removes their pre-invasion positions. The Ukraine president, President Volodymyr Zelensky, has said that it's a minimum that Ukraine expects and that he is the president of Ukraine and not mini Ukraine. Russia finally taking Mariupol, a Ukrainian city, would be their biggest achievement and it would give something to the president, President Putin, to celebrate on May 9th, Russia's Victory Day. Ha Russia has already taken control of the eastern part of Ukraine, the Donbass region, 
and now they are trying to take Mariupol. The people in Mariupol are being evacuated and many have been moved to a safer place. President Joe Biden has gotten a new deal to help Ukraine defend itself. $150 million of military help. Hi everybody, this week for the Pre-HR Career segment, we are interviewing Rob Hume, who is a pilot with a great story, journey and advice to kids. I really hope you enjoy what he has to say and learn from him. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm Rob and um, I'm, um, I've been in aviation for whew, since 98, so that's uh, what, 20, 22 year, 24 years already. And um, I'm originally from South Africa, so I, I learned how to fly there. Um, mm -hmm. I did, um, obviously in aviation, there's a lot of ways you can start off flying. So I did it privately, um, which means you pay for it yourself. And um, it took me about four years to get my pilot's license. And then um, I was very lucky I got a job and I've flown all over the world in Africa on contracts. And um, I finally, uh, at the moment, I'm an airline pilot. And um, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Great, thank you. And can you tell us more about what you do in your job as a pilot? Um, yep. Uh, pilot now, um, especially in the airlines, it's quite a, a different job to other sort of roles in aviation. Um, pretty much our, or my role now is to get the airplane from uh, A to B safely. Um, mm -hmm. So what it normally entails us is that we sign on or we go to work uh, a little bit earlier than the passengers and we have a look at through all the documentation. There's a lot of paperwork we have to get through on um, where we're flying to, what routes we're going to be taking, um, how much fuel do we need on the flight, is there any special cargo we're carrying on the flight, um, what's the weather going to be like en route and in the destination. So we, as a crew, there's normally two or three of us all the time. Um, we all make a decision together and then we head off towards the aeroplane and we go get the aeroplane ready before all the passengers get on. And um, once that's going and everything is A-OK -okay and we've got all the fuel and everything gets closed up, we lock the doors and uh, we go for our flight to our destination. So, and um, en route, uh, obviously, we just manage everything en route uh, from weather and other traffic because there's a lot of other aeroplanes in the sky all the time with us. And we mm -hmm. just try to get to the, or we get to the destination as safely as possible. Wow, that's amazing. And why did you choose the aviation sector? Um, I was actually very lucky. Um, ever since I can remember, I've always wanted to fly airplanes. I've mm -hmm. always been, uh, sort of had a great uh, love for them. Uh, my, my dad was in aviation. Uh, he flew privately and a lot of his friends flew privately. So growing up, I was always around airports and my dad took me a lot to air shows. Um, so I just grew the love from there. And I, I was quite lucky that, you know, when I left school, I pretty much knew what I wanted to do with my job. Um, mm -hmm. And the nice thing about aviation or what I do is it's actually more of a paid hobby for me because I really love what I do. So it's not really work for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's wow. <laughs> and other than that, what else do you enjoy about aviation? <laughs> I like aviation um, for a couple of reasons is that obviously probably the first one is the traveling is really good. You get to yeah. go all over the world, <laughs> you know, stay in some nice hotels, visit different countries, um, see different people, meet different people. So yeah. that is, I have to, that is one of the great perks of the job. But another great uh, what I love about it is that it's always changing. You don't know two days are ever the same. The weather's either different, there's either a problem with the airplane, uh, there's always something happening. So it's never a boring job. Every day is a new day, mm -hmm. a new challenge. And that's it. It's, it's very challenging to do what we do or what I do. Um, and there's actually nothing better than 
taking off this huge aeroplane and taking it high up into the sky and, and really having fun. Um, yeah. and also, just sitting up there, we see, I've seen the most incredible sunrises and sunsets and moonrises. And it really is a, a special way to, to live and do a job. Yeah. So I'm very yeah. lucky. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. And uh, how did COVID uh, affect what you do? COVID, uh, unfortunately, did uh, play a huge impact, um, mm-hmm. obviously, with the aviation sector. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of, um, especially myself and other colleagues being expats, uh, expatriate pilots, um, most of us uh, lost our jobs. But even saying that, and even in the downturn, you always have to try to look for the brighter side of life. And um, it's given me time to spend time with my family. So it has affected me negatively. But on the other side, I've got time to spend with my family now, which before I was traveling quite a lot. Um, and it's also let me study now to do my European license. So I've just done something else yeah. to, to better myself. So that's a good thing. Um, and with everything, you know, whenever there's a downturn, there's always an upturn. And you can see COVID is falling away now. Um, yeah. There's lots of uh, tourists coming back or people traveling all over the world. So mm-hmm. airlines will come back again and, you know, you just slot back into your new job or another job. And again, it's a hobby. So you just mm-hmm. do what you enjoy. Wow. And what is your advice to kids? Um, my biggest thing is uh, um, what I, I found the best is that whatever you do in your life, you must really enjoy what you're going to do because normally in a career, you're going to be doing it for quite a big part of your life. So when you make that choice, just make sure you're going to love, number one, what you do. Um, mm-hmm. If I could give advice to aviation, it's a fantastic job um, mm-hmm. if you've got a love for it because uh, you will be traveling a lot. You'll be away from your family a lot. Um, you miss a lot of important things. But on the other side, you, you get to re- do a very challenging job that's changing every day. You get mm-hmm. to fly really nice machines and airplanes. Um, you get to meet a lot of uh, people. Um, so, if, again, if you are interested, obviously you need to, in aviation, be pretty good with uh, math, science, English, uh, which are very good prerequisites. And then um, just do what you enjoy. That's that's the best advice I can give. Enjoy what you do. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Your advice was great as well. And we really loved the interview. And we learned a lot. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. Is there anything else you would like to know? Or? Um, no, that's it for now. We'll send you the link when we post it on YouTube. Fantastic. Well, thank mm-hmm. you very much for including me. I really appreciate it. I think what you guys are doing is great. Thank you so uh, much. Hopefully we'll meet again soon. Yeah. (laughs) Excellent. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 La Gombe est un pays d'Afrique d'Ouest. Sa capitale est Banjul et sa population est de 2,4 millions d'habitants. Ce plus petit pays d'Afrique continentale. C'est connu pour ses écosystèmes et sa faune diverse. Son agriculture est l'un des plus grandes sources de revenus là-bas. C'était autrefois le centre de la traite des esclaves. Il y a 600 espèces des oiseaux là-bas. Et il y a 9 tribus différentes. Merci beaucoup. This week for the extra fun segment, I'm going to be talking about the fun facts about the English language. I hope you enjoy. About 4,000 words are added each year to the English dictionary. The most common words used in the English language are I and you. 
The most common letter in the English language is the letter E. It's about 11% of the entire English language. The most common adjective in the English language is good. The most commonly used noun is time. The word set has the highest number of definitions in the English dictionary. Month, orange, silver, and purple do not rhyme with any other word. English is the official language of 67 countries. The word uncopyrightable in the English language is the longest word that does not repeat any letter. A sentence that contains all 26 letters of the alphabet is called a pangram. The sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog is a panogram. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Chinese segment. This week we're going to be learning how to say the personal pronouns I, you, he, she and it in Chinese. They're very simple. Let's just remember what we learned last week. Last week we learned how to say our age. Do you remember 我是三岁? I am 13 years old. Now let's go on to the personal pronouns. But before that, you can go and check out the numbers, what we learned last week, and greetings and basic sentences that we learned in the other weeks before coming to this video. Now let's learn how to say I, you, he, she, it. I is something we have already learned. It's wo. It's the same wo in wo shi san sui. I am 13 years old. How to say your age? Wo shu tsai. It's the same wo. Ni is you. Yes, it's the same ni in ni hao, hello, and ni hao ma, how are you? How to say he, she, and it actually sounds the same because it has the same tone and same letters but it does not have the same character when writing it. It's ta, ta. So if I wanted to say he is 50 years old, I would say ta wu shi sui. Wu is five, shi is 10, so that makes 50. Sui is age and ta is he. It would, mean the, it would be the same thing for she is 50 years old or it is 50 years old. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed and don't forget to practice. Thank you. Bye.